Hey guys, Thunderstruck MTV here. Hey, today I wanted to do a video uh, giving you a quick tip technique uh, for those of you who change your own disc brake pads on Shimano disc brakes. Um, unfortunately for me, I know this firsthand and the tip is simply this, is to open the system before you push back the pistons to make room for the new pads. Even though Shimano has stopped even mentioning that in any of their official manuals, be it my XT8100s, be it these Dior 6100s, they don't speak about it. Uh, their whole section for replacing pads is uh, step one, remove the wheel and tire, step two, remove the pads, step three, clean the pistons, step four, push back the pistons. Step five, put in new pads. Step six, put in the red spacer or uh, you're back in your bike. Step seven, press the lever a couple of times. Step eight, and go ride and have fun. Nowhere in there does Shimano say to open the system up. So here's what you need to do, and then I'll tell you what happened. So this uh, little tool right here, this is called a Shimano bleed uh, cup, bleed funnel. And what you need to do is you need to open this screw here, right here on the reservoir, two and a half mil Allen should do it. And then you install and screw in this, uh, this funnel here, it screws in its place. You put just a little bit of fluid in the bottom, maybe, I don't know, half inch of the most, quarter inch enough to cover the bottom. Pull out your little stopper here and that essentially uh, gives you an open system. And so once you have the open system, then you're okay to push the pistons back, regardless of Shimano not mention it in their uh, manual. So when I, he I heard about a couple other, read about online, a couple other people having this issue, and I always thought it was because they overfilled the system, and we overfill the system, uh, for those of us that work on our own bikes, um, if, especially with the Shimano brakes, we're chasing the uh, wandering bike point. So what we'll do is have the, the bike in the riding just like it sits here riding that means the the pistons have already been you know squished out everything's ready to go pads in wheels in just like you're getting ready to go ride what we'll do is we'll simply put the funnel in here put a little bit of fluid in and then we'll flick the lever a few times trying to thinking that the the wandering bike point issue is because there's air in the lever it's called a shimano lever bleed and that essentially overfills the system because the the pistons are already pushed out into, we'll call it the riding spot. So that actually overfills the system. So when I heard about and read about online, people tearing their diaphragm, that sounds weird, people tearing the brake diaphragm, I thought it was well, because you overfilled the system. Shimano's official stance on their fluid volume is simple. They want, uh, they want the pistons all the way back into their bores, they want the yellow thick bleed block in. Then they want us to bleed the system, get all the air out, put the funnel in. And as soon as that's done, they want us to then remove the funnel, put the screw in, sealing and closing the system off. Then they want us to remove the pad spacer, put in the new pads and either put in the red, uh, the red pad spacer disc uh, or put the caliper on the bike and then put your wheels in and then uh, use your, the lever and then set the lever a couple times uh, to uh, set the, the proper fluid level. The first two pulls after doing this, it'll go all the way to the bar once, for sure probably twice and maybe a third time, and that's as the pistons boop, 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 squeeze together to, to where they have to go. That's Shimano's official stance on how much volume they want of fluid in their system. So as I read online about this happening, what happened to me, um, with other people, I assumed, well, that's because you overfilled the system. So uh, when it happened to me, I didn't overfill the system. I went ahead and did it exactly like I just explained with what Shimano wants to do in terms of setting the proper level. And I never once did a lever bleed because I knew at that point it had nothing to do with the wandering bite point. So I never once did a, a lever bleed through the lifespan of the rear uh, pads. So I thought, since Shimano doesn't mention it in their manual about opening the system, I thought, hey, I was totally safe. So I take the time to go to replace the 
pads. I take out the tire. I prefer to use the, uh, the park guy here and wedge it in. So what I do is I will uh, remove the old pads. I clean the pistons real quick. I put the old pads back in. And then I use this guy to wedge, twist, and push on the old pads. So they, they push the pistons back into the bores without a lot of pressure. Some people will use like a plastic tire lever like this and actually press right onto the piston. But man, Shimano's pistons with those, uh, those ceramic pistons are so sketchy that that's why people are breaking them, chipping them, you push them in at an angle. So to me, this is the safest way in what I do. So anyway, um, I was doing that, had my part spread, spreader in. I'm twisting the pads a little bit of trying to push the pistons out. Um, and I feel a little bit of resistance. And as I'm doing it, I'm like, okay, that's, I guess that's normal. That's normal. And out of the corner of my eye, I look up and my rear brakes here, uh, moto style rear brake and bloop, fluid on the ground. My wife's car was here, splashed up all over the, uh, her car when it hit, uh, you know, she'll never see this video. So what she doesn't know won't hurt her. And I, I literally, I literally looked up in disbelief and it was like, what you gotta be kidding me. Could not believe it happened. Um, and I thought, well, maybe I got lucky. Maybe the diaphragm didn't tear, you know? Uh, no, it, lever was trash. Lever was gone from that point out. Uh, no matter if you've read it online, I, I assure you and I promise you there, there is no bleed off valve on the inside of these levers. There's no safety valve that isn't supposed to happen when the fluid squirts out the end or dribbles out the end. I don't care if it squirts or dribbles. All that means is, is the rubberish material, diaphragm in there, that's supposed to expand, contract, and, and do what it's supposed to do with, with proper fluid level. All that means is it tore and it's trash. Uh, Shimano does not sell any independent small parts on the inside that we can service. The lever is now trash. And I literally couldn't believe it. So I had to source a new 8100 lever. Um, took a few days to get here. Luckily I have the ability to uh, throw it on, you know, fill it, bleed it, get it ready to go. But man, if you didn't have that ability and you needed to take your bike, you would, you'd be going to the local bike shop. If you got the lever through, the, through them, you'd be paying more than sourcing it yourself online. And I, I would guess you're probably looking at $150 just off the top of my head for the price of an XT lever and the labor unit to, uh, to install it and get it bled. Uh, you know, Dior, lever, Dior level levers, say that fast, like mine, a little bit less, but boy, what if you have an XTR lever? That is a seriously, seriously bad day. So it's just kind of a shame. It'd be bad enough if, if Shimano mentioned that in their official, you know, manual, and I just didn't read it and thought, hey, I knew everything and, and, and it happened. That would be bad enough. I'd still be irritated. Be like, hey, well, I should have read the direction. Should have read the manual, right? Again, Shimano doesn't mention any of it anywhere. I think they used to, like with the 785 levers, the kind of the ugly ones with the chrome, the chrome top there, uh, about five, six, seven years ago, whatever. I think it used to be in there about opening the system up. But uh, so again, if I had a Magura TRP SRAM, I would open a system up based on my experience of what happened to me. Um, I don't, can't say that I've been online and read any other because I have, I'm a Shimano guy, so I haven't specifically looked to see if this happens with TRP and stuff. That'll be for, for, for you guys. But if you're a Shimano brake user, um, boy, I, I can't recommend highly enough to learn from, from my mistake and, and open that system first before you try to reset the pistons, man. Just open it up, give that fluid somewhere to go. Um, and yeah, you know, it's, I can feel someone down there who's already been typing away halfway through this video. Guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I've done tens of dozens of thousands. It probably. Again, I, I've done all my own pads as well, and it was never an issue. Why it happened on this particular time, don't know. It certainly wasn't because the system was overfilled. That I can tell you. I don't know why it happened. I can tell you it wasn't because it was overfilled, and I did everything exactly like uh, Shimano said in their manual. So. Again, I just wanted to make this video here uh, to help prevent the, the downtime on the bike, the money, 
the frustration and everything else on something that is so darn simple that it, it shouldn't happen. And yet, uh, yet here we were. So anyway, if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments. Um, I'll get back to you. And hopefully this video will prevent somebody else for, uh, from having a bad day like I had. So there you guys go. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See ya.